Hi, science fans. Welcome to making your atomic model kits. Well, I've got my atomic model kit here, um, and kind of the heart of it are these tiny little wooden spheres that are right here. Each little wooden sphere, as you might guess, stands in for one of the atoms. And what they did is they color coded them just so you can understand which atom is which. So the yellow ones are hydrogen, by far the most abundant element in the entire universe. I mean, the hands down, nothing even comes slightly close to it is hydrogen right here. So that's why there are so many of these yellow ones. Whereas example, I don't know, let's say here, like green stands for chlorine and oxygen stands for, you know, the red stands for oxygen for these. Um, carbon is gonna be the black ones. Now, it doesn't mean that really carbon atoms are black in any way. It's just like it doesn't matter, you know, oxygen atoms are not really red. I mean, think about it, you know, it'd be like red everywhere that we looked, you know, if they were really the color of that. It's just to help us understand which one's which, right, um, when we're building these. Now, to link them together, to show normally what you have are two atoms, and they're being combined together by their electrons through covalent bonding or ionic bonding, you know, that type of thing and everything, right? Um, normally, it's the electrons that hold them together. We've got these little tiny wooden pegs right here that just show you, okay, these two are bonded together. This would be like an H2, um, you know, H2 going on for us. So what we want to do is kind of go through a couple different examples for this, um, for it. Um, you might remember, uh, you might remember a little while ago in the first chapter that we talked about, well, they've for a long time been able to take a picture of an atom. Like, oh, there's an atom right there. Ironically enough, that's what's in the background right here, it's only very recently that we've had the technology to take a picture of entire molecules, which totally goes against what you would think would happen because the molecules obviously are much bigger, right, than it, um, for example, right? But we just recently, in the last couple of years, have got the technology to do that, right? And it was all about focusing. It was harder to focus on a larger object than just one single little tiny thing, right? So it's kind of cool that while we've done models like we're about to do for many, many years where chemists would build these models, it's only very recently that we're able to kind of prove it in a sense and say like, look, here's an actual photograph of the same thing we've been building for a long, long time. So uh, let's see here, you don't have to worry about that, but let's get going here, right? So the first one that we're gonna make is a water molecule, right? So all that it is is you've got one hydrogen, right? Or sorry, one oxygen and two hydrogens, right? H2O, right? So when you go and you make a water molecule, you kind of put these little guys together just like this, right? And so there is our water molecule. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse ears in a weird kind of way and everything, right? So that's water right there for us. Oops, hold on here. The next one we want to make is going to be ammonia, right? So in ammonia, you have NH3. Right, hopefully you can see that in the background right there. So for this one, let's see here, for NH3, so we need one nitrogen, that's gonna be this lovely blue color right here. H3 or three hydrogens, so we can kind of steal from this guy right here, right? We can put one, two, and then you need another one, three right in there, right? And so that's gonna be our ammonia molecule right there. Ammonia also is kind of nice because it looks like a back massager, you know, just the way that it kind of is shaped like that. If you ever go to, sometimes in the mall, they have those little wooden things that you can kind of, you know, massage your back with or something. Right, there you go, head massager. Right, so that's ammonia. That's what ammonia looks like. Or here's the picture right here of ammonia. The next one that we're gonna do is some propane, right? So for propane, let's see here, we need carbon. We're gonna have three carbons. So I put one, Two, hold on here, three carbons together, and then you're gonna have eight hydrogens, right? So the easy way to do this, what I always recommend for people to do is get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens or what I've got here in my little box, right? And so what you try to do is then combine them all together, right? So if you can get these guys to all connect together in one way or the other, you're gonna have yourself, oops, some propane right here, right? So I got propane kind of sticking out here. Get them all in together. Propane, propane, propane. Oops, I got an extra one. Now uh, propane's claim to fame, at least in atomic model kits goes, is that if you get your prote propane molecule, 
it looks like this guy right here, kind of like in the picture. If you get it adjusted just right, <laughs> you end up with like a poodle dog, you know, it's got like a little nose and ears and the tail and things like that. So, you know, propane or the poodle dog. Right, so that's what a propane molecule looks like. Next one that we're going to do is C4 right here. <coughs> Alright, so just like before, you know, the easiest way to do this is start off with some, you know, start off with the materials that you need for it. So four carbons, one, two, let's see here, three, three carbons, I need an extra carbon, four, so we got, okay, four carbons. We need eight hydrogens, so we can pull them up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need these guys. Three, four, five, six. We need two nitrogens. Well, I happen to have two nitrogens right here. One over here, one over here. Sometimes it kind of is like a little puzzle getting all these guys together. And six oxygens. So let's see here if we can get our six oxygens in. One, two, three. Four, five, six, so many of them, and then how many hydrogens did we need? Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, oh my gosh, hold on there, we almost lost some C4, you want to be careful with this, dangerous stuff C4, but here you go. All right, C4. So if you ever see a movie or a TV show and they talk about C4 blowing things up, well, that's why, because in the formula, it starts with C4, four carbons that you have. Now, yes, no, there are several ways that we could have put this together. And sure, there are lots of rules. There are literally tons of rules about how the elements combine together and everything like that. On this level, all we're doing is, can you get them to connect together? Kind of like a little puzzle and everything. Later, uh, perhaps in college or high school, you might learn some of the different rules about, okay, these connected with those and everything like that for it. All right, so we've got C4. That kind of looks like this guy right here. Then normally we would keep going, um, but I'm going to save you a little bit of time. Normally we get to caffeine, getting even bigger and bigger and bigger. Caffeine is going to look like this guy right here. So you got a whole bunch of those elements combined together for it. Um, and that's, that's going to be all that we're going to have for you as far as that goes. So you've got your atomic models, right? You know, the colors don't really stand for the actual colors of the atoms, remember? Just, you know, so we can understand in this example right here, you know, for example, there are four um, carbons, you know, and so many oxygens and so many nitrogens and things like that. And it's a really great way of understanding how the elements combine together, right? So you can see what happens for it. All right, make sure you take this quick quiz and I'll see you later in class.